Hello and welcome back. This is a uh, second video in the hardware uh, department, so to speak. And uh, in this video, I will look closer at the SD RAM implementation. So in order to figure out if the SD RAM is working or not, I will start by loading a project. So if I go to um, to the STM32 cube, go into the repository here and the cube uh, F7 firmware. In projects, uh, if I find the right board, in my case, the STM32 746G discovery board, um, enter that folder, and in examples, I will find the FMC here. And there, there's an example called FMC underscore SDRAM. Uh, I'll go into the SW4STM32 here, and just press select folder. Uh, I'll remove the first folder, so we'll, this is the project here, we can press finish, so we will convert that project uh, into a cube IDE project. And uh, this project here, of course, we'll try to, uh, to build this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it built right away. Um, in example and user, we will have the main file here. So this is the, the main example here. Uh, and I did this uh, a few days ago, and if I recall correctly, I don't change that much here. Um, so the example tries to uh, write to the SDRAM, and then it will try to um, try to read it, read the data back. Uh, and then we can just right click on this and say debug as an STM32 uh, program here, and let's see what happens. Um, let's see where I've breaked at main here, and then I will just go down here. Um, so it will start here at um, it was initializing, of course, and then it will uh, initialize the SDRAM. It will fill the buffer uh, and then send that buffer to the SDRAM and then uh, write it back. So let me just put a breakpoint here before before we try, try to compare those two buffers. I'll just uh, hit uh, resume here, and then we are at the breakpoint right away. So if I highlight or look at the Rx buffer here, we can see that we have indeed numbers here. So this example, I haven't changed anything, uh, and even uh, the timing here, the, the SDRAM timing, uh, it's from the example, uh, and the, the SDRAM timing setup, it's also from the example, I haven't changed anything but these values seem to work and you can see here that the rx buffer here it contains uh, the values and we can also do now we have uh, we have uh, paused we go i have a memory browser here so i can go to the to the to the memory which is uh, hexadecimal c uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. so this is the beginning of the of the ram and there's an offset here in um, uh, in the in the address here, which is 800, so I'll just write 800 here instead, and you can see that the first uh, word here is zero, the next is one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. It carries on up until uh, the 4096. Um, so here three Fs. So we know that the that the SD RAM is working just by running this example here. Um, this is really the simplest way to figure out if your, your SDRAM is working. And, and on top of that, you can copy these timing setups. So all these timing setups here, we can copy those back into uh, I, and our, our other program. I did this video guide uh, three hardware uh, with the, with the config configuration of the Cube MX. Uh, so I will try to open this. Uh, let's see, we'll go to source and go to uh, it is hardware in it dot cpp and then if I can just list these uh, next to each other like this I'll just do it like this here so um, have a closer look at this um, the, the setup here if we go down just fine this is not the LCD in it it's not the, FM, oh, the FMC in it here so we'll uh, just copy these numbers here uh, the SDRAM memory width is 16. Four bands, uh, cache latency will be two. No protection, SD clock period is also two, I believe. Let's just check, yes, it is two. 
um, enable uh, the burst. Uh, I'm just delete this and say enable yes. and the pipe delay is zero. Okay, and the timings from up here is two and six and it's four, six and two, two, two. So these are the timings. Uh, so that should be enough to initialize uh, the SDRAM here. We just press save here. For the LCD in it, instead of pointing at uh, our data image bitmap from the last time, we'll just uh, comment this out and then we'll point back again at the frame buffer start address like so. Um, I will close down this window here and let's see uh, in the board configuration here. Uh, we haven't changed anything here. Um, one important thing to notice is that we go if we go to main.cpp here uh, and we go down to in, in main where we create the, the OS task here, you can see we start off by assigning uh, 128 words to the um, is this is a heap, I think uh, the stack size. Um, any normal touch GFX application, uh, the stack size is 4096. So I will just assign this right away. All right, let's see if there is anything else we need to change. Oh yeah, we need to change the refresh uh, interval. So if we go back here, you can see the re refresh count in our hardware in it uh, is uh, 1653. And if we go to our uh, project here, um, main.c, we should find this uh, timing somewhere. Let me just figure out where that is. Uh, so in the, in the examples main, uh, we have the, the SDRAM timings uh, set up here. And then it's finished off with this BSP underscore SDRAM underscore initialization sequence. And if we have a look in that, uh, is it, this is the same uh, sequence that the touch GFX does, but have a look here. Uh, this is the refresh rate counter. And um, what it actually does, uh, it says this value of 1292 gets bit shifted one bit to the left. Um, but that is, uh, it, we write, or this line here writes directly to the register SDRTR. So if you take this number here, 1292 and then we put it in our own hardware in it uh, instead of the 1653 like this um, the bit shift will occur automatically so where we use this here is we use it in the mx underscore fmc or sdram underscore init x so the extended init here. we have the same commands um, for the clock configuration and uh, pre-charge and all that stuff we end up with the last command being program the refresh rate and we use this refresh rate count that we just set. So this is the same uh, value, uh, is the same uh, command sequence that we had in our example uh, from before. So let's try this one out. Okay, in order to get this to work, we have to go back inside to the IOC file. That means opening up the device configuration tool, but that also means that we will have a lot of settings overwritten. So I paused the video and tried a lot of stuff that didn't work. So now I open this back up and then we will have um, a look at what we have to do. Under the DMA 2D, we want to make sure that the global interrupt is enabled. Uh, and we can carry on under LTDC here. Also make sure that, uh, that these inter interrupts are enabled and we will just enable them both just to be sure here. Uh, if we go to connectivity and to the FMC here, we will make sure that uh, that the maximum output speed is set to very high, which it is. And uh, you see here that uh, these are the values here. We'll just uh, change this to two and six and four and six and two, two here, like this. The cast latency will change to two memory cycles just to uh, have it the same si uh, same way as the original example was working. And um, I'll just take the time here. Uh, sorry, this cache latency will be free for my application. 
the SDRAM common clock here, the two HGA HCLK clock cycles. This is derived uh, from, in the clock configuration here, we have the der uh, this, um, I think it's the AHB, no, sorry. Um, there is a, um, the max system clock is 200 megahertz. And that uh, system um, uh, clock here is divided by the value in the SDRAM common clock. So if we divide it by two, obviously we get 100 megahertz as the main uh, clock cycle. If we divide it by three, we get 66.6 uh, .6 megahertz. And this is verifiable if you take an oscilloscope and, and probe the, the, the clock pin, you will get this value. Um, so that value here is uh, is used to figure out the timing so if you go into the data sheet of the sdram uh, you can actually figure these values here out by uh, finding out how many clock cycles uh, in nanoseconds you have to wait so for 100 megahertz cycle uh, we have a period of 10 nanoseconds per cycle um, so in order to satisfy the requirements for the, the the memory we have to have these values here this is very weak, um, both in my description as of now, but also in in the app notes, uh, there's hardly anything to go by for these. Um, and also these, these values are actually just copied directly from our example with the, where we tested the SDRAM and we could show that it was working. But by entering it into the CubeMX configuration here, we will make sure that all these changes will get propagated when we generate the code. Uh, and that is actually the real reason why, why I'm doing this. Um, down in the, the graphics here, there shouldn't be any under parameters here. We just make sure that the, the frame buffer start address is set to to C0000. Uh, um, we can use a single buffered, uh, but that shouldn't make any changes right now. You can also see the refresh rate count here is back up and I'm not completely sure where this number is generated from. Uh, maybe we can, we'll just uh, have this refresh count SDRAM parameter. So it probably comes somewhere in the, in the FMC setup, but I haven't found anywhere where this is actually set. Um, all right, so let's go back right now. Uh, we can see there's a star here, I'll just um, save this. Remember that you have to close this IOC window from uh, each time you generate code, un un otherwise we won't be able to use uh, this handy tool here. Uh, I have this tool here. Uh, I showed that in the last video, but um, I'll post a link uh, to the GitHub uh, for Michael, um, who made this tool. I'll just run this real quick, patch this. We have to press uh, F5 to update the project like this, and we can try to build it again. Uh, I'm not convinced that this is going to work. We have to go back into our source, make sure that in the hardware unit, we have to change this to 1292. That was one thing. We also have to go back to our main. Yes, we have to wait while it's building before we can make these changes. Come on, takes. that's the problem. With the current code generation, we have to rebuild every file. Um, yeah, uh, in main here, we have to go back and check that the task is actually getting the stack size that it needs uh, for a touch GFX uh, stack. Let's rebuild this. It should be fairly quick now. Um, like this. So I'm not convinced that this is working as of yet, but I'll show you the display right now and then we'll press debug. Is it even the right project that we're debugging? I'm not sure. With video guide three hardware, let's see what's going on. Uh, nothing as of yet. So we're not out of the woods uh, yet. Uh, let's have another look at what we can do about that. Okay, I got to figure it out now. And you can, as you can see in the in the screen, uh, I have it running. So I just reverted all the changes I did while I had the video paused um, to let you guys know what was actually going on. So I'm pretty sure that um, last time we opened up this um, 
configuration tool here, we were looking at the uh, all the, the the interrupt enables, and we were looking at uh, let me see the DMA had interrupt enabled and the LTDC had interrupt enabled. Uh, if we go to connectivity here, the FMC uh, there's no enable. But um, there's one uh, important change that I'm going to do here. In the system core, I can go to DBIO, and I will have my PD4, which is the LCD disp here, I will set its uh, standard to, uh, to high, because then our display will be enabled, all right? So I'll just save this. Uh, I'll, uh, it will generate code. It will generate an error. And uh, hopefully there's the error, like that. We can... Uh, close this IOC window like this and let me just oh dang it I closed the console window um, let me just we need to update the project just as uh, before I will just uh, find the, the program here um, this is my console window here it's called the STM uh, touch GFX fix um, I have the XA well uh, pointed at the at the project directory. Well, let me just find that real quick. Um, in the workspace here, I have the address here. I'll just paste this and then update the project. So now it's successfully patched. That's nice. Uh, that means that we can press F5 on this, like this, and now we will be able to build. So let me just try to build this project. Um, I figured out what is wrong, at least in my case. Um, so we got the timings right. Uh, we got the SDRM timings right. We got the project, uh, the, the demo project where the where we test the SDRM, we got that working. Um, and that also means that we got the timings uh, set uh, just a moment ago. I think I entered these values directly into the cube MX, so these values are generated correctly. The only thing we need to update here is the refresh count, I believe. Uh, this is 1292, at least that works for me here. Okay, um, we still have to go to main and we have to adjust the stack size. Um, so I haven't found a nice way to do this yet. Um, the cube MX will not generate the proper stack size for the default task when you have enabled the touch GFX task. So you have to manually go into this and write 4096. But that creates another problem. And if you recall, I just recall, um, in one of my first videos where you create another task uh, in the free RTOS, you cannot have the same stack size uh, that is, this is, remember this is in words. So we have to multiply this by four. And if you multiply this by four, and I know this is stupid, but I'll just take the calculator here. 4,096 times four is these uh, 16,384. So if we go to the include here, and I go to free RTOS config, Let's check here. The total heap size is 15,360. So this number is, is, is larger. So we are trying to allocate more stack than the total heap size. Um, so I just double this. Uh, that is about 32,768 or something like that. That's not the double, but uh, anyway. Um, so I just make sure that this is bigger than the stack size that we just assigned. All right, um, let us see. Um, that means that uh, we can press uh, debug here. And uh, that should do it. So I'm not sure what is, uh, what's the root cause of this, but at least I, I know, okay, so now it's it's running. You can see um, there's this, this button, the touch screen is not working. But um, let me just show you that we can show you that it's working. So we can go into the touch GFX folder here and we can go to the, just double click the touch GFX uh, design. And I'll just change the color or do some other background or something, uh, then it should be going. Actually, I have another idea. I have in uh, one of my folders, um, let me just find that. Uh, yeah, it's a bit tucked away here, but I have a series of uh, 
of uh, what do you call that uh, images um, is for another project so I have this BT0 and going all the way to the BT7 so these uh, eight images are a, a hexagon with increasingly red um, color in the in corner so I'll just uh, add this here to my images here so I can insert now a, an animated image like this and the first image should be my zero and the last one should be my seven like this and I can say loop animation and uh, the update interval could be 50 like this I will also change the background here to some some dark color and I'll press generate code uh, so the dark color should allow us to see that we have indeed changed the the project here let's just build this again and uh, and the animation on the button sh or the, the animated image should allow us to see that the program is actually running so we uh, can make sure that it's not stalled let me just try to hit debug and let's see what happens uh, building compiling uploading cross my fingers Oh yeah, so it's pretty obvious that we have uh, an animation running. That means that the program and the application is running. So the takeaway from this is to um, make sure that your refresh count is right. Um, there is a bit of a cryptical calculation in the in the in the project. Um, if we go to uh, that is not the right. Uh, this one is the SDRAM example. So you, if you go to main.c here, I think the size calculation is in main.h. Uh, no, sorry, it's in um, this uh, initialization sequence. Let me just check here. We have the timing settings, and then we write all this stuff. The uh, this one, yes, this is the initialization sequence, and you can see here it says that the set the refresh rate counter it says set to 15.62 microseconds times the frequency minus 20. i have absolutely no idea where this calculation is coming from and i have have a really hard time getting this number to be 1292 uh, but nonetheless um, if we can acknowledge that it is indeed nine, uh, 1292 fine um, so i've changed this and I have changed in main, I've changed the, uh, the stack size to 4096. And that also requires uh, the free Arturus config to be changed, the heap size, total heap size. That is actually the only changes I have done apart from the timing settings uh, done in the cube MX. So I apologize if this video came out a little bit more cluttered than it was supposed to be. But um, use the use the, the, the demo, the example for testing the SDRAM. And if that works and you can use the memory browser to look uh, across the, the, uh, the, the, the words in the SDRAM, if, if those works, then you know your SDRAM connection is working. Um, and then we can work out the, the correct and fine tune, tune the timing settings afterwards. Um, so the main, the big breakthrough here was for me at least to set the the refresh counter uh, to this magical number, and also change the the stack size and the total heap size for the free autos. So I hope that you can use this video for getting your own custom board to work. Um, feel free to write a comment um, if there's something that's unclear. And as always, thanks for watching.